What's going on guys? Welcome back to the channel. So in today's episode, we're going to be installing an AEM wideband gauge in the Corvette. A lot of you guys know that I recently installed a BTR Stage 3 camshaft in this car, so we got to get it tuned. And to do that, I need to install this first. So first things first, we're going to get this thing jacked up in the air, so we can take a look at the exhaust, so we can install the actual sensor for it. I have to weld in this bung here, so let's get started on that. Now that the car is in the air, I'm going to show you guys what I'm working with down here. So here's what we got. We've got the driver's side header here, and then we've got the high flow cats here. I don't really care about putting the sensor before these because they're basically just straight through pipes. Um, they're not really going to change the readings at all. So what I'm going to do is weld in to this mid pipe here. I'm going to do the driver's side just because that's pretty typical for what people do uh, with a V8 engine. Uh, you obviously can't do both banks at the same time, so we're going to pick the driver's side. So. As you guys can see, it's going to go in right about there. We got enough wiggle room. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to pull this entire midsection down, drill this out, weld it up, put it back up, and then we'll get the sensor plugged up. Okay, so fast forward, I have the midsection out of the car now. So right here is where I'm going to be putting this bung. Um, it does have to be angled down a little bit to clear that section of the uh, tunnel plate here. So I'll make sure I do that. So I'm basically going to use a step drill bit to open this up. Once this little lip can fit in there, I'll pop it in and then we'll weld it up. There we go. We got a 7 8 hole drilled and that fits perfectly in there. So I went ahead and tested this out. Um, it does fit in there really nicely and we still have a good gap between the exhaust and that'll also give us a decent gap between the uh, tunnel plate. So when you put these in, you want to make sure that you're at a little bit of an upward angle just so that way um, no condensation builds up in these when you shut off the car because that will foul these out and you don't want to be replacing sensors all the time just because you didn't put the sensor uh, bung in the right place. So um that's about all we have to do for that so now i'm gonna get this exactly at the angle that i want it weld it up and then we can put it back in the car well i can tell you one thing she ain't gonna be winning any beauty pageants but by golly she'll work let her rip Fast forward again, and we have the exhaust installed again. So there you guys can see, there is the sensor. Um, so I'm basically just running this wiring up there and through this OEM spot. So I'm basically going to probably zip tie it up somewhere along like that, and then bring the harness down through the engine bay here, and then run it back up you know, through where the headers go up that way. So depending on what setup you have, it's going to look probably a little bit different. But this is what I'm doing. Probably the easiest way to do it. And also um, with the sensor right there, it's super easy to access. Um, so if I need to change it out, it's easy to do. So just make sure that you're thinking about these things when you're installing yours because you don't want to have to get back in there one of these days and change it out and you're kicking yourself or put it in the, putting it in the wrong spot. So, all right, time to wire it up. I ran the wiring through here. I put some wire looming up there as well so that way it wouldn't get too hot. Um, I zip tied it there and then ran it all the way up through where the headers go. I kind of had it follow the HVAC over here so it ran up through there and then back behind the motor. And then it came all the way over here. So what I did is I took this panel out so I had better access because trying to reach all that stuff through here is just a total nightmare. So um, as you can see, there's a couple grommets here. That one there is for the clutch. And then this one here is for um, like your hood latch and all that. So it just comes out right here. So what I did is I ran 
this wire all the way through there and then kind of cut this so that way I can kind of fit it in there like that and then pop it back in there. So that gave me just enough to run it here. And this little spot there, that's where it comes out at. So super convenient. You can kind of run it behind there. I'm gonna zip tie it like that. And then it basically just sits nicely behind here and goes up all the way up here and then comes out right there. So I took out this trim piece here. Um, that's where I'm gonna mount the gauge pod up here. So my plan is I'm going to reinstall that trim piece, put on the new gauge pod that I bought, uh, mount the gauge, and then this will plug into the back and I'll just kind of stuff the excess back behind there into the dash. Uh, and then I've got another wiring harness that I've got to mess with. It's just for like power, ground, all that. So I'm gonna show you exactly how I'm gonna set that up. There we go. I ended up slicing the grommet open just to make it a little bit easier because that was a total pain to get in. Um, but it kind of wrapped around at the end there. It kind of wrapped around a little bit nicely with that new cable in there so it'll still block out any water or anything like that so I think it'll still still do its job um, but besides that it's routed real nicely through the engine bay so I'm pretty happy with it now that the wiring is run from under the car for the sensor and it's plugged in to our gauge I also plugged in this second harness here and as you guys can see it has a lot of wires on it the two that we're going to focus on are the switched power, which is the red, and then the black one, which is the ground. So I'm going to run it basically through here under the dash, and then it's going to come out right here. So I didn't show you guys the entire process for taking out this center console. Um, it's kind of tedious. Um, now I, I think that it would just take up too much time in the video, but real quick, I'll just go over it. Um, so first, you're going to take off these tabs here, and then there's some 10 millimeter nuts. Take out the two 10 millimeter nuts, take off these two 10 millimeter nuts, undo the wiring here, and then basically you can just scooch this entire thing back a little bit. So once you have that, then there are three bolts. So there's one here, one here, and then one up here behind your uh, little cover here. So it's behind this cover. Um, obviously you take this guy off, it just pops right off. Take this guy out, that pops out. And those will expose, these two will expose your uh, two bolts. So again, one there, one there, and then one there. After that, you can take off your shift knob, pop out your shift boot, and then you just pull this entire assembly out just like that. And once this is all exposed here, now you have access to all of this wiring. So I'm gonna go through some of the wiring here. I might end up using the stereo wiring um, if I can't find a good one down here. I'm just gonna basically go through them and try and find a switched power, which basically just means once you put in the key, you flip it on and then you get power. You don't want a constant power because that's going to drain your battery and it's going to be super annoying. After that, we'll just run the ground to probably this one here, or if there's a closer one, I don't know. So I'm going to go through those, see which one I like, and then I will keep you guys posted on what I find. I got that spliced in. I just got done soldering it. So now I'm going to put this back in and then ground it. Okay, so I grounded it right here, right there. And then I kind of coiled these up and stuck them out the side here. So that way, when I'm using my HP tuners setup, I can, uh, you know, tap into these wires, whichever one is the sensor wire um, for HP tuners. Um, and then I can kind of just stuff them back in here once I'm done with them. But um, now that we have power, switched power from the radio, and then we're grounded, now it is time to switch on the key and see if it works. 
So the radio works and the gauge works and now it is heating up the sensor. All right, so the sensor is heated up. Everything's ready to go. So now it's time to put everything back together and make sure that uh, we pretty it up as much as we can. And then I should be getting my um, gauge pod today at some point later. So I'll be able to hang that up and mount it. The interior is all put back together. We got the center console back in and the bezel. Everything looks great. Um, and now, so we just have these wires run up this way. Everything else is tucked the way it needs to be. So I just got this in the mail. So this is that trim piece I was talking about on the A pillar. And this is what I got for it. So I had to uh, kind of sand down the edges in there a little bit to get this to fit, but now it fits nice and snug and it goes on just like that. So it'll sit up there kind of like that. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna drill these holes and I just have to pop these little pins in. Once that is done, um, then I'm probably gonna drill a hole into the back of this to get the wiring to run through. I'm a little bit nervous to do that because once I do that, there's no going back and I can't really change the location on this if I do that. So a little bit nervous. I'm gonna test fit it again, just make sure I like where, it, where, it, where it's at. Um, <clears throat> but yeah, that's the plan. So now that I have this mounted, I drilled into here, uh, kind of with a pilot bit, and I'm going to drill out this pretty big right here so that way I can feed the wires through to the gauge now. Okay, it's all installed now. I kind of skipped ahead a little bit. Um, I'm just gonna let you guys know, give yourself a little bit more wiring than I gave myself because trying to plug this all in with the short amount of wiring that I gave myself, I was trying to not be, you know, the guy that has like a bunch of wires coiled up in here, but there's a reason why people do that. Um, you know, it just makes it so much easier to pull this out and maneuver it and all that. So give yourself a little bit more wiring. Um, wait to put these little plugs in until the very end because trying to get them back out when you're trying to take this off and you know, install the gauge and feed the wiring through and all that. These break super easily and it's just gonna piss you off. It pissed me off a lot. So besides that, I mean, I'm really happy with where it sits. Um, you know, I'm not gonna bump it with my knuckle, I don't think. A lot of people do complain about that with these. Maybe if you have bigger knuckles than I do, um, you know, it might become an issue. I don't think it'll be an issue for me but some people say that they scoot them down to about like here and they kind of cut out this section here to fix that. Um, it makes it sit a little bit farther back and you don't have to worry about that. But I don't think it's gonna be an issue here. I really like how it looks, so let's test it out. All right, moment of truth. The radio turns on, that's good. And it still turns on. I didn't bork the wiring somehow. All right, and it heats up and now it's re reading lean, so that's a good sign. Um, I am going to test this um, just idling and driving around as well. Right now it's storming like crazy outside and we live in Colorado, so I'm a little worried about the hail. So I'm not gonna show that in this video, um, but overall I'm sure it works just fine. So the next step is to uh, order the tune from Michigan Motorsports. I've already got the HP tuners hardware and all that. So now I just need to plug everything up for the HP tuners, get it downloaded on the laptop, and then start working with the uh, tuner for some data logs and e-tunes and all that, and then we'll be good to go. So stay tuned for that. But there you have it. That's how to install the AEM wideband gauge in a C5 Corvette. If you guys have any questions about anything that I covered in this video today, make sure to leave those questions in the comment section below, and I'll try and help you out. But that's all for this week. If you enjoyed the video for today, make sure to leave a like and subscribe to the channel for future content. I'll catch you guys next week. Later.